Good morning YouTube and today I've been profiling my Magnet Warrior deck profile. This is a deck that I've been in love with ever since I saw Valkyrion brought out the first time. This is what got me into Yu-Gi-Oh! was Valkyrion. So uh, ever since then I wanted to try and make a deck based off of it. It's just nothing that nothing that you could make in terms of competitive wise that would make it viable until they released the new support. And th that made this deck fantastic. And so I was like, oh, I gotta get him as quick as possible. So my friend Danny owed me some money, and so he got me the deck, thank goodness for Danny. And ever since I've been playtesting it, and I have my own little weird build of it. I run, a, starting off, I put on a playset of each of the Magna Warriors. They'll carry on, you probably, most people you'll see only run two of him. I like my three because it makes it more seeable, and it's my favorite one, so I get to see it more. And I run each of, I run the normal monsters, so I have even more reason to justify keeping him. Um, and I run place of the Berserkion. This one you can't probably argue with because he has additional, like he has to banish a magnet warrior from graveyard, pop in a, any card on the field. It's not once per turn. And if he leaves the field by any means, you get a special summon each of the dudes he used to bring him out. Pretty darn cool in my opinion. Uh, moving on to the magnet warriors, I want to run alpha, two betas, and a gamma. Why do I run two betas and and why do I run these guys in general? Because I run first of the dragons in this deck. Um, this is a Ties the Brethren over a Brilliant Fusion build. So that's another reason what I need more four-star monsters. Um, each of the Electromagnet Warriors uh, lets you uh, tribute them during your opponent's turn. A special summon out a different Magnet Warrior. So I use them as a more of a possibility to see to be able to float and protect your life points. And it gives you more level 4 possibilities. I run a playset of Delta. Delta was definitely something that deck likes to see. Um, you know, someone, he's a foolish burial for the Magnet Warrior. Um, you can overlay him for rank 4s. He's a Tyus Brethren target. And if he's sent to the graveyard, he's special in Valkyrian. Pretty darn cool. Um, in terms of the Electromagnet Warriors, I run a playset of Alpha, searches any Magna Warrior. Place a beta, search as any magnet warrior, and double gamma. You'll see this ratio most often in these type of decks. Um, gamma is not as viable, especially with Ties the Brethren in this deck. He's He doesn't give you pluses as much as these two go, and so you only run two of them, but you still need him because you need the magnet warrior, and he's pretty cool. So, I since I do run Ties the Brethren, I run False and I Pack of Cephalo. Um, and because you normal summon Delta, do your foolish burial, do whatever you want to, and then you play Titus Brethren, you get out False Dinah and anything else, and your opponent can't special summon. It's just as simple as that. Um, I even might consider running two, but the fact that he's not the, the heart and soul of this deck is the reason I only run one. I run one Sentry Sol Soldier of Stone. You don't want to see more than one of him. Um, he's good ties the Brethren target. Um, he's good with Foolish Burial. Um, he's an instant, like if you have any Magna, or excuse me, Electromagna Warrior, and him in your grave, it's an instant rank 3. Um, and you can use that only once per turn, and so there's, and you can use it over and over again. So there's only reason to run one. I run one Block Dragon. This guy is awesome because he lets you search for, for your Magna Warriors, let's search for your regular Magnet Warriors, and he's a protection of Rock Monsters. Pretty cool. And I run a Maxi because Maxi is still viable. Uh, in terms of moving on to our spells, we run two Magnetic Fields, which is a pretty great addition. Um, it's a Compulse. It's a way to bring back and make your rank 4s possible. And most often, whenever people read this, they're like, eh, it's okay. I'm not going to destroy it. But then they get affected by it, and then they realize, crap, I made a mistake. I run two Fusion Gates because... Um, in terms of searchability, you can find it with your terraforming or polymerization a little bit better than that, and you can use it multiple times. And it's like a, if you're if you're trying to get your magnetic field off, or let's say you have fusion gate, it's uh it's an easy like oh bait out the MST or twin twisters so I can get out my magnetic field. Um, why two of each? Because running three of any of these, I found it to be more cloggy. Um, running one is you don't see them enough, so two, two, and two is my ratio I really like. Um, I said this is Tizer Brethren build, and so there they are, the play set of them. <laughs> um, for since I do run double Valkyrie or triple Valkyrion and triple Imperion plus Black Dragon, you have seven trading targets, so I run two of them. 
Uh, Dark Hole and Rageki because board wipes are pretty darn cool. Soul Charge because it's a great card. Um, Dragon's Mirror because I run First of the Dragons um, and a lot of decks don't have outs to First of the Dragons and so I've gone to this, I've been that person lately. I, whenever I run a monster, a deck that has normal monsters in it, I'll run Dragon's Mirror because I like it so much. Uh, one Twin Twisters, you can probably put, bump this up and swap out some of your other stuff for it, like Deck of Dragon's Mirror if you don't like that. Bump this up a little bit more. Foolish Burial for your Century Soldier of Stone, or if you're trying to get off your Berserkion, you can send your third piece that you don't have. That's it for the main deck. Moving on to our side, we run two Imperion. He's a blanket negation once per turn. Um, he's a 4,000-4,000, so you're not going to be being over this guy most of the time. Um, and if he leaves the field, you get a special summon a Valkyrion and your Berserkion from your deck, ignoring their summoning conditions. Fantastic, in my opinion. Um, negations, anyway, are fantastic. You know, your Infinity, your, your Toad, and this dude, they're just too awesome not to run, and one of the reasons that made me love the deck so much. Oh, excuse me, I gotta read his full name, because he's still so cool. Imperium Magnum, the Superconductive Battle Bot. Let's get it. There we go. Such a long name. Um, first of the Dragons, because, again, I like him. He's, for those of you who don't know what he does, he can't be affected by your opponent's monster effects, and he can't be destroyed by effect monsters. So if your opponent is running a deck that's all based off of getting out powerful XEs, Synchros, and don't have any negation or destructions any other way, this guy wins, and it's pretty cool, in my opinion. Uh, I run a playset of Gorgonic Guardian. This deck can make it so easily with your Electra Magnetic Warriors and your Century of Soldier of Stone. Uh, it's a Phoenix Chain that you can use either player's turn and um, makes your opponent's zero, monster zero. You can use that in the battle phase and blanket, make their zero, boom, you're, they're destroyed. It's pretty darn cool. Let me make sure. Yeah. I run a Nightmare Shark because going for game is pretty cool. A Dante to help you set up your Magnet Warriors or your Electromagnetic Warriors in Grave. Um, Graham Pulse because it spells and trap removal is pretty cool. That's it for my rank 3s. I run a Gaga Cowboy in the 4s. 101. Heartland Draco because going for game is pretty cool. A Minor Utopia Package. Only only one rank 8 Hope Harbinger because most of the time you're going to you're Level 8s are pretty darn cool enough, and then they are. He's just a possibility because you have a lot of freedom in this extra deck. And that's going to wrap up my Magnet Warrior deck. It's a deck I've loved. Um, so glad that they got the new structure deck and the and the Delta. It's fantastic. I wish we could get the GX support, but, you know, it's, it's whatever. Um, it's just, of course, it's my own personal take on it. It's a little bit different, but, you know, take what you want. Hopefully you can find something you can use from it. Um, Magnet Warriors are definitely something that took a back burner to the... The Kaiba, or the Kaiba structure, the ABCs, because, I mean, it was so much more viable at that point in time. But I think there's definitely a space for Manit Warriors, and you can get several wins off of it. Um, um, it's consist more consistent than what it seems, so I hope you give it, out, give it a shot. If you haven't, hopefully if you're watching this video, you're thinking about giving it a chance, so do it. Anyway, thank you. Have a great day.